So we're coming up to the Bolshevik Revolution. We're finishing off with the glorious revolution. There was uh, resistance in Ireland and Scotland. So they call it the Bloodless Revolution, but there was bloodshed. I haven't found a body count um, yet, so I haven't found out there was, you know, the rebellion and there was fighting. So that uh, that's the assumption is you know, when there's armies fighting that there's going to be a series of dead people. So the Jacobite Risings were a series of uprisings, rebellions, and wars in Great Britain and Ireland uh, occurring between 1688 and 1746, so for like 60 years. The uprisings had the aim of returning James the Seventh of Scotland and the Second of England, and later his descendants of the House of Stuart to the throne of Great Britain after they had been deposed by Parliament during the Glorious Revolution. And that's crazy. The Jacobite Risings were living in the past. Um, they there should be a turnover in government. They didn't like the I guess the coup d'état, um, but basically he just lost militarily, just left right the Parliament. The uh, the legislative assembly it was a it was a glorious revolution so really they're holding on to the, you know it's incredible how long the Jacobite risings how long people who have are addicted to the state and addicted to power how they want to go back right but once they brought you know, rise you know use arms against the government they become the thing that they had hated so they already you know enter into a different world and they'll never go back to you know what had happened. Um, you know, 40 years later, in 1746, they thought that he was going to come back and be like the, the monarch. So, um, they're called the Jacobite Rebellions by the ruling governments. The first Jacobite, the second Jacobite Rebellion, the 15th, the 45th, after the years in which they occurred. Although each Jacobite rising had unique features, they were in part a larger series of military campaigns by the Jacobites attempting to restore the Stuart kings to the thrones of Scotland and England after 1707 Great Britain. James was deposed in 1688 and the thrones were claimed by his daughter Mary II jointly with her husband the Dutch born William of Orange and after the House of Hanover succeeded to the British throne in 1714 the risings continued and intensified. They continued until the last Jacobite Rebellion, the 45, led by Charles Edward Stuart, the young pretender, was soundly defeated at the Battle of Culloden in 1746, and this ended any realistic hope of a Stuart restoration. Haha! <laughs> so, I don't know. The Glorious Revolution sounds really nice, actually, and uh, the Catholics, the Protestants, all religions are ridiculous to me, so um, to, to blindly have allegiance to some monarch over another monarch, no, I want to be, I don't want, I want to be his slave, I don't want to be your slave, and I'll fight to the death to be his slave. It's almost like the Republicans and Democrats, right? No, I want to be the slaves to the Democrats. No, I want to be slaves to the Republicans. <laughs> but you're still a slave either way. It doesn't matter. I love being a slave. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Russian Revolution. So let's get into it. Let's see what the, uh, this is history.com. Led by Bolshevik Party leader Vladimir Lenin, the leftist revolutionaries launched a nearly bloodless clue, clue, coup d'etat against Russia's ineffectual provisional government. So, there's two revolutions, okay? There's the October Revolution, and I think there's a February Revolution. Pretty sure there's October and a February. There's October, one well, I'm seeing October here. I'm not, the February. Okay, good for me. Okay, so you have a February Revolution, you have the October Revolution. Both of them are the, the Russian Revolution of 1917, and they're connected. Because one deposes of the tyrants, and then the other one, like, uh, ushers in new leadership. Both, I don't know, the provisional government, you could have got democratic legitimacy, you could have got people to vote for them. They had vote. you know, the Soviets were voting for them anyway, so they could have... They jumped the gun. The Bolsheviks jumped the gun. If they could have got legitimacy from the from the get go, from the on onset, you know, when Bush didn't, you know, when the Supreme Court said Bush could become president, and Obama with his whole birth certificate thing, the it's like they want to, you know, once the they have been doubt has been put upon his, you know, legitimacy as the leader. And it's like, well, what's, do we go on with this? You know, like, what is this? They don't, they're not supposed to lead, but we're going to just allow them to go ahead and do it. And, um, and so that's, they didn't do it by coup d'etat, right? They did it through legal ma ma maneuverings. Um, the birther thing, I don't even believe, I think it's just 
Ridiculous. <laughs> um, but the Bolsheviks, okay? So the Bolsheviks, you had Vladimir Lenin. He's a leftist revolutionary, and they launched a nearly bloodless coup d'etat against Russia's ineffectual provisional government. The Bolsheviks and their allies occupied governmental buildings and other strategic locations in the Russian capital of Petrograd, which is now St. Petersburg. And within two days, it had formed a new government with Lenin as its head. Bolshevik Russia later uh, renamed the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, was the world's first Marxist state. Born Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov in 1870, Lenin was drawn to the revolutionary cause after his brother was executed in 1887 for plotting to assassinate Tsar Alexander III. He studied law and took up practice uh, in Petrograd, where he associated with revolutionary Marxist circles. In 1895, Vladimir Lenin helped organize Marxist groups in the capital into the Union for the Struggle for the Liberation of the Working Class, which attempted to enlist workers to the Marxist cause. In December 1895, Lenin and other leaders of the Union were arrested. Lenin was jailed for a year and then exiled to Siberia for a term of three years. After the end of his exile in 1900, Lenin went to Western Europe, where he continued his revolutionary activity, it was during this time he adopted the pseudonym Lenin. In 1902, he published a pamphlet titled What is to be Done, which argued that only a disciplined party of professional revolutionaries could bring socialism to Russia. In 1903, he met with other Ru uh, Russian Marxists in London, establishing the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party. However, from the start, there was a split between Lenin's Bolsheviks the majoritarians who advocated militarism, and the uh, Mensheviks, the minoritarians. So I guess the Bolsheviks were in the majority since they're called the majoritarians, but that could just be Orwellian, right? Um, all of it could be Orwellian, who knows? The Mensheviks and the Bolsheviks, those are the two. Uh, they advocated a democratic movement towards socialism. That's exactly, the Mensheviks should have been the way they, the Bolsheviks were wrong. And the Mensheviks should have had the backbone to stand up to the Bolsheviks and say, no, you're doing it all wrong. Absolutely. You should have put the vote to the people. Um, the Mensheviks should have had a candidate. The Bolsheviks should have had a candidate. Put the vote to the people. Instant runoff voting. Have democratic movement towards socialism. You would have got it. That's the, that's the inevitable, you know, democracy ruled by the people. Socialism. We all care about one another. It's just the next step. These two groups, groups increasingly opposed each other within the framework of the Russian club. <laughs> the Russian Social Democratic Workers Party. Um, and Lenin made the split official at the 1912 Conference of the Bolshevik Party. After the outbreak of the Russian Revolution of 1905. So you actually have a rev revolution before the revolution. So there's another, there's a Russian Revolution, right? There's several French revolutions. There's several Russian revolutions. There's a Russian Revolution of 1905. Uh, but that's not the w Russian Revolution that people think about. It's the Bolshevik Revolution. It's the Lenin, Stalin, Trotsky takeover. So the Russian Revolution, I think that's a that's an interesting one we should actually compare it to because um, the Russian Revolution was another time of revolution. What did they get? Um, the Bolsheviks in instituted land reform as soon as they got in. As soon as they got in, they said all the land of uh, USSR was theirs to distribute to the poor peasants. Um, so he says, in the Russian Revolution of 1905, uh, Lenin goes back to Russia. The revolution which consisted mainly of strikes throughout the Russian Empire came to an end when Nicholas II promised reforms, including the adoption of a Russian constitution and the establishment of an elected legislator. However, once order was restored, the Tsar nullified most of these reforms. And in 1907, Lenin was again forced into exile. So what an asshole. Nicholas II is going to be, um, they're going to kill his entire family. Uh, the Russian czars for centuries was run by, they're Catholics, I'm pretty sure the czars were Catholics, uh, but they were run by um, just, you know, monarchical uh, sort of secession, right, of, of heir secession of, you know, lineage, they had to be like the kids in the monarchy, right, it's just one family would rule over uh, the, the people forever and ever. And so uh, there was no czars after the Bolshevik Revolution, after these revolutions, there is no more. Um, Nicholas II. They wipe out his whole family. They kill him. That's where Anastasia is. There's a Disney movie, Anastasia. Um, and supposedly they kill Nicholas II and his wife and all the kids. They take him, they capture him, they put him in a basement, and they just murder all of them. 
and then um, they never found the bodies, and so then people later on would say, hey, I'm Anastasia, and I'm Anastasia, but that wasn't true, but eventually they did find the bodies with the DNA test, and they was able to prove it. Um, but the Bolsheviks killed them. They murdered them. They assassinated them. And so that's going to be an interesting part of, uh, parts of the story. The uh, assassination, the murder of the Romanovs. It's not funny, but they're dictators, so it's hard to be sad for them. The uh, Romanovs, the Romanovs. So it's like Roman OVS, the Romanovs, Romanovs. So the Bolsheviks were volt. Um, Lenin opposed World War One, which began in 1914 as an imperialistic conflict called on proletariat soldiers to turn their guns on the capitalistic leaders who sent them down into the murderous trenches. So he said that World War One was all about capitalism and it had nothing to do with working class people. So they should, you know, um, be fight against their oppressors, right? For Russia, World War One was an unprecedented disaster. Russian casualties were greater than greater than those sustained by any nation in any previous war. Meanwhile, the Russian economy was hopelessly disrupted by the costly war effort. In March 1917, riots and strikes broke out in Petrograd over the scarcity of food. Demoralized army troops joined the strikers, and on March 15th, Nicholas II was forced to abdicate, ending centuries of czarist rule in the aftermath of February Revolution, known as such because of the czar's use of the Julian calendar. Power was shared between the weak provisional government and the Soviets or councils of soldiers and workers committees. So that's what a Soviet is. It's a council of citizen or workers. It's a committee of citizens or workers. So he wanted a socialist republic, right? So he wanted all these Soviets were going to be the, instead of households being the basic economic measurement, they were going to be Soviets, workers councils. Um, and so, okay, so a lot of this stuff's interesting. We, we just saw Nicholas II was forced to abdicate, ending, ending centuries of czarist rule in the aftermath of the February Revolution. Um, so the strikes broke out in Petrograd over the scarcity of four demoralized army troops joined the strikers. So the troops joined the people, right? So the, the troops, the soldiers, recognized themselves in solidarity with those who had no bread. And then March 15th, Nicholas II was forced to abdicate. And that ended centuries of czarist rule. Eventually they're going to kill him, I think, in May or June or July. But he abdicates in March. That's the February Revolution. The strikes, and they, they forced him to abdicate. They forced him to abdicate. Um, they tried to get reforms in the 1905 Revolution, but it failed. He, he was going to have an establishment of elected legislature, had a constitution, all this other stuff. But he lied. So, good. I mean, he lied. He lied. So, after the outbreak of the February Revolution, German authorities allowed Lenin and his lieutenants to cross Germany en route from Switzerland to Sweden in a sealed railway car. Berlin hoped correctly that the return of the anti-war socialists to Russia would undermine the Russian war effort, which was continuing under the provisional government. Lenin called for the overthrow of the provisional government by the Soviets, and he was condemned as a German agent by the government's leaders. In July, he was forced to flee to Finland, but his call for peace, land, and bread met with increasing popular support. Peace, land, and bread. Peace, land, and bread. Uh, the Bolsheviks won a majority in Petrograd Soviet in October. Lenin secretly returned to Petrograd on November 6th to 8th. The Bolshevik-led Red Guards deposed the provisionary government and proclaimed Soviet rule. Lenin became the virtual dictator of the first Marxist state in the world. His government made peace with Germany nationalized industry so there's nationalized oil and coal and nationalized industry and distributed land uh, beginning in 1918 had to fight a devastating civil war against czarist forces so the czarist wanted control immediately afterwards I've seen people actually <laughs> they had uh, Stalin you know look, bring back Stalin <laughs> um, and also the czars bring back the czars czar Nicholas he was such a good man <laughs> Um, I don't know. People have such a weird adulation towards their oppressors because he decorated himself and had that helmet with the point. Is that why you love him? I don't know. Um, the Civil War does kind of show to me that the Marxists, you know, they needed a legitimate, they should have been elected. If they were elected, they would, wouldn't have had a fault of Civil War because they would have had legitimate authority. 1920, the Tsarists were defeated in 19. So it took two years, right, afterwards. In 1922, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics 
was established upon Lennon's death in 1924. His body was embalmed and placed in a mausoleum. A struggle for succession. Stalin becomes the successor of Lenin, right? So clearly, you know, Lenin died when he was 24 years old, or 1924, when he was real young. Could have been poisoned. He could have been poisoned by Stalin. And then Stalin took power. So since you were violent when your takeover, then violence can be used against you when they take you over. You can't do it that way. Those are bad revolutions.